All right, well, you just saw my buck. Thank you for that. You're welcome. Glad um, it uh, went as well as it did. Yeah, it went really well. But uh, tell me about your three biggest bucks that you found for people over the years. Ooh, three biggest. Um, well, I am fortunate to, to track on some of the best properties in the country. Mm -hmm. uh, so I am tracking a lot of big bucks and bucks over 200. Um, but uh, we've got a 230, a two, I think 225, okay. a 220. And we've, uh, and I've trailed some that were in the 240s. Uh, both of those weren't dead and they were either shot later on during a later season or yeah. um, sheds were found. So uh, I know that, that uh, we didn't miss them. They, they just simply weren't dead. But right. we've, we've, we've uh, definitely been uh, uh, fortunate to be able to trail some really big deer. Yeah. Tell me about the 230. How did that unfold? How did that go? Uh, that one um, actually was kind of an interesting case where the hunter actually saw where the deer more or less ended uh, up dead, but the thing had done a, a, a big loop, probably mm -hmm. a quarter mile loop, and then came back almost all the way back to where it had been shot. Right. So that was a little bit unique. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so the 225. Uh, that was kind of interesting because five guys and another dog had looked for a day and a half or something before I got called in. And I don't really like that coming up, in and, yeah. and uh, trying to have to mop up later on, but we did. And, and uh, that actually we found under a blowdown okay. and they had all gone by the blowdown and then onto a, a bit of a goose chase for quite an extended period of distance. So right. uh, uh, that was kind of fun finding that one. Uh, <laughs> dog dragged me under there. I was like, oh, oh there he is. <laughs> yeah, there's a big buck. Yeah. That was a beauty. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So, so with these bucks, where were they hit? Were they hit okay, but they just are a tough animal and uh, they can run far? Or well, all of that. I mean, I've found a number of 200s and yeah, the range, you've got all of that. Yeah. Um, you know, certainly gut shots, liver shots. Um, I mean, those are, are often ones that can go a distance, but, but it, they're dead, mm -hmm. you know? Right. It's a question of when and where. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, other hits can be more, more troubling and maybe a less percentage of them end up being mortal hits. Yeah. But um, it's all different. You never know what you're gonna run into right. and how it's gonna play out. Lots of variables. Yeah. With some of these bucks, do they die later on? Or do they die in the next, you know, 48 hours? Or do they die a week later? Or how does that Well, control? unfortunately, all of that can happen. Right. Um, and sometimes, if I've done a trail and we've proven that the deer is not yet dead, and then it uh, and, uh, goes MIA, through the rest of the season and never shows back up again. And we have reason to believe that the trophy is down for the count. Sometimes I'll go back in and then area search right, to, yeah. to recover the, mm -hmm. the, the, the rack for the guy, you know, find a carcass. Does it happen often where you find the deer? We've had pretty good luck at that. It's, it's a tough project because if yeah. the deer's been on his feet for days or weeks before he finally did succumb, I mean, you're, you're talking 360 degrees and yeah. potentially miles, miles away. Right. So it's, it's a needle in a haystack. It's mm -hmm. better than you doing it on your own. I've got the advantage of the dogs and they're, they're, they're the scent. And maybe they can, you know, hit on it from quite a distance, yeah. but it's still needle in a haystack. Who knows where you're looking? Yeah, and with the dead carcasses, they can smell the dead, you know, rotting, and we can't smell that. Correct. From hundreds of yards Correct. Away. I've literally had my dogs hit on it from up and over a hill. Yeah. Run up a hill, go down the next side, and there it is. Is that with down, like, we're downwind of the deer? Is that? Right. Or, okay, yeah, right. like best scenario. And it's still would be possible for us to be sweeping through and the wind is wrong and for us to meet, m miss something. So yeah. you got to be pretty thorough about it. Yeah. It's, it's a project. Circle it, around. Certainly tracking the deer like we did today yeah. with yours and locking yeah. on and going to the deer. That's, yeah. sure that's the not, way it's supposed to work. Yeah, making sure you're not 
leaving last blood, just letting the dog do its thing and just staying back. Right, but uh, what you did properly and, and you know, on, as we're going along, you know, you're looking for blood behind me and you, mm. you say, oh, I got a speck of blood. Well, that's proof 100% we're on. And right, yeah. So that's a great help. Yeah. Yep, that it, this this morning went about as well as it could. Yeah, have. I was surprised it went as well as it did, to be honest. <laughs> relieved too. Yeah, uh, very your relieved. voice when you said you, I'm watching my dog and looking for blood, and I didn't see the deer up ahead of us, and you had spotted it across the ravine. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. I, there he is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and I'm sure the lot, relief was yeah. palpable. Yeah. Yeah, it was. <laughs> Uh, so great. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for tracking him. You're welcome. Yep, thank you.